Now I want to give you an exercise. This exercise has to do with learning to trade an edge like a casino. The objective of the exercise is to convince you that trading is just a simple game of probabilities, numbers game. Not much different from pulling the handle of a slot machine. At the micro level, the outcomes to individual edges are independent occurrences and random in relationship to one another. At the macro level, the outcomes over a series of trades will produce consistent results. You've heard that from me before, and I'll say it over and over again because it's key to your success. From a probabilities perspective, this means that instead of being the person playing the slot machine as a trader, you can be the casino. If one, you have an edge that genuinely puts the odds of success in your favor. Two, you can think about trading in the appropriate manner. And I'm referencing back now to the five fundamental truths. And three, you can do everything you need to do over a series of trades. Then, like the casinos, you will own the game and be a consistent winner. So here's how I want you to set up the exercise for this entire lesson. Pick a market. Choose one actively traded Forex and uh, if not Forex stock or futures contract to trade. Doesn't matter what it is as long as it's liquid. Then choose a set of market variables that give you an edge. Th this can be any trading system you want. The system or methodology you choose can be mathematical, mechanical, or visual based on patterns. It doesn't matter whether you personally design the system or purchase it from somebody else, nor do you need to take a long time or be too picky trying to devel develop or, or find the best or the right system. This exercise is not about system development, and it's not a test of your analytical abilities. In fact, the variables you choose can even be considered mediocre by most traders' standards because what you're going to learn from this is not dependent upon whether you actually make money. If you consider this exercise an educational expense, it'll cut down on the amount of time and effort you might otherwise expend trying to find the most profitable edges. However, if you've made a genuine attempt to do this on your own, but are still having problems picking a system, then go to the uh, Forex Guys and Manifesto 2013, uh, which I offered to you for free, and there are three systems that are tested and proven, known to be profitable, in that document and you can use any one of those systems. After you have chosen a, a, a set of market variables or a system that gives you an edge, then the next consideration is trade entry. The variables you'd use to define your edge have to be absolutely precise and they are in all three of those systems that I just mentioned. The system has to be designed so that it does not require you to make any subjective decisions, or judgments about whether your edge is present. If the market is aligned in a way that conforms with the rigid variables of your system, then you have a trade. If not, then you don't have a trade, period. No other extraneous or random factors can enter into the equation. After trade entry, you have a stop loss exit. The same conditions apply to getting out of a trade that's not working. Your methodology has to tell you exactly how much you need to risk to find out if the trade is going to work. There's always an optimum point at which the possibility of a trade not working is so diminished, especially in relationship to the profit potential, that you're better off taking a loss and getting your mind clear to act on the, ne on the next edge. Let the market structure determine where this optimum point is rather than using an arbitrary dollar amount that you're willing to risk on a trade. In any case, whatever system you choose, it's got to be absolutely exact, requiring no subjective decision-making. Again, 
no extraneous or random variables can enter into the equation. Another consideration is time frame. Your trading methodology can be in any time frame that suits you, but all your entry and exit signals have to be based in the same time frame. For example, if you use variables that identify a particular support and resistance pattern on a 30 minute bar chart, then your risk and profit objective calculations also have to be determined in a 30 minute time frame. However, trading in one time frame doesn't preclude you from using other time frames as filters. For example, you could have a filter as a rule that states you're only going to take trades that are in the direction of the major trend. That's a pretty common type of filter. In that case, you might use a 30 minute time frame for entry and the daily chart to determine the major trend. Taking profits. Believe it or not, of all the skills you need to learn to be a consistently successful trader, learning to take profits is probably the most difficult to master. But don't worry, there's a way to set up a profit taking regime that at least fulfills the objective of the fifth principle of consistency, which is I pay myself as the market makes money available to me. This is the only part of the exercise in which you will have some degree of discretion about what you do. The best course of action from a psychological perspective is to divide your position into thirds or quarters and scale out of the market as the market moves in your favor. And, th and this is what I would recommend for this exercise. Now let me talk to you about trading in sample sizes. The typical trader practically lives or dies emotionally on the results of the most recent trade. If it was a winner, he'll gladly go to the next trade. If it wasn't, he'll start questioning the viability of the edge. And we've talked about this quite a lot in this lesson so far. To find out what variables work, how well they work, and what doesn't work, we need a systematic approach, one that doesn't take any random variables into consideration. This means that we have to expand our definition of success or failure from the limited trade by trade perspective of the, of the typical trader to a sample size of 30 trades or more. When you apply any set of variables to the market, they may work very well over an extended period of time, but after a while, you might find that their effectiveness diminishes. That's because the underlying dynamics of the interaction between all the participants, the market, is changing. No snapshot, a rigid set of variables, can take these subtle changes into consideration. You can compensate for this phenomenon and still maintain a consistent approach by trading in sample sizes. Your sample size has to be large enough to give your variables a fair and adequate test, but at the same time, small enough so that if their effectiveness diminishes, you can detect it before you lose an inordinate amount of money. I'll explain why 30 trades is an ideal number in a later lesson. Once you decide on a set of variables that conform to these specifications, you need to test them to see how well they work. Right now, the bottom line performance of your system is not very important, but it is important that you have a good idea of what you can expect in a way, in the way of a win to loss ratio, which is the number of winning trades relative to the number of losing trades for your sample size. Now, in regard to accepting the risk, a requirement of this exercise is that you know in advance exactly what your risk is on each trade in your 30 trade sample size. Because the exercise re requires that you use a 30 trade sample size, the potential risk is that you will lose on all 30 trades. That's not very likely. Nevertheless, it is a possibility. Therefore, you ought to set up the exercise in a way that you can expect the risk in monetary value of losing on all 30 trades. 
When you have a set of variables that conforms to the specifications described, you know exactly what each trade is going to cost you to find out if it's going to work. You have a plan for taking profits and you know what you can expect as a win-loss ratio for your sample size. Then you're ready to begin the exercise. The rules are simple. Trade your system exactly as you've designed it. That, this means that you have to commit yourself to trading the next 30 occurrences of your edge, not just the next trade or the next couple of trades, but all 30, no matter what. You cannot deviate, use, or be influenced by any other extraneous factors or change the variables that define your edge until you have completed a full sample size. By doing all this, you will have created a trading regime that duplicates how a casino operates. If you believe by now in the five fundamental truths and that trading is just a probability game, then you'll find this exercise to be effortless. As a result, there will be no fear. There will be no resistance or distracting thoughts. What could stop you from doing exactly what you need to do when you need to do it without reservation or hesitation? Nothing. On the other hand, this exercise is going to create a head-on collision between your desire to think objectively in probabilities and all the forces inside you that are in conflict with this desire. The amount of difficulty you have with this exercise will be in direct proportion to the degree to which these conflicts exist. Don't be surprised if you find your first couple of attempts at doing this virtually impossible. So, how should you handle these conflicts? Monitor yourself and use the techniques of self-discipline to refocus on your objective. Write down the five fundamental truths and the seven principles of consistency and keep them in front of you at all times when you're trading. Repeat them to yourself frequently with conviction. Every time you notice that you're thinking, saying, or doing something that is inconsistent with these truths or principles, acknowledge the conflict. Don't try to deny the existence of conflicting forces. When they pop up, refocus on exactly what you're trying to accomplish. Disrupt the association process so that you can stay in the now moment opportunity flow. Step through your fears of being wrong, losing money, missing out, and leaving money on the table. And follow the rules of your trading regime. This is my final comment for this lesson. Don't prejudge how long it'll take you to get through at least one sample size of trades following your plan without deviation, distracting thoughts, or hesitation to act. It'll take as long as it takes. If you wanted to be a professional golfer, it wouldn't be unusual to dedicate yourself to hitting 10,000 or more golf balls until the precise combination of movement in your swing were so ingrained in your muscle memory that you no longer had to think about it consciously. When you're out there hitting those golf balls, you aren't playing an actual game against someone or winning the big tournament. You do it because you believe that skill, acquisition, and practice will help you win. Learning to be a consistent winner as a trader isn't any different. That's it. I'll leave you with those thoughts and that exercise. And next week, we'll talk about another factor in the success of your trading. Position sizing or money management and what part it plays in your success. And trust me, it is a very big part. It may be the most important part of your trading plan.